in today's show, we're doing an ADP battle. Myself and Mitch Casey of the Ball Boys podcast. Michael Bolton, he's going to sit in, he's going to watch. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Last year we did three of these shows, ADP battles. I'm going to try and do at least three of them this year as well. What it is, myself and another fantasy analyst, we get on, we look at one ADP position, just a random number that I make up. And there are two players, and we try and debate each side of that argument as which player you would take at that pick. It's not like to say this is what you do in every situation. There's nuance, and sometimes it's a really tight window. But just to give us an idea of debating the merits of certain players. So we're going to talk about five separate players on today's show. That'll be the structure for all of these shows as we go forward. I hope you enjoy it. Just one thing. Yesterday, there was a contest on Instagram to, uh, to guess where my partner was born. So you could throw it, uh, throw it in there to get into my Locked On Fantasy Basketball Championship League. Um, congratulations to everybody who did answer it correctly. If you answer correctly, it doesn't mean you get in. I picked one person who answered it correctly and sent them a message. So check your Instagram DMs. But the correct answer was Zambia. A lot of you said New Zealand. She grew up in New Zealand, but she was born in Zambia. So Zambia was the correct answer to everyone who got that correct. I don't even remember when I mentioned that, but I must have mentioned it at some point. So you guys pay a lot of attention. So that was the correct answer. And check your DMs to see whether you did uh, did end up being the, the winner of that contest on Insta. No more uh, no more mucking around. We are going to do more invites for that, by the way. I've still got, what, I've got two, three. I think I've got like eight spots left in that league. So there will be other questions that get asked on coming podcasts to get you into that league as well. But let's bring Mitch in and uh, do some ADP battles. Here he is, first time on the podcast. Mitch Casey is here from uh, the Ball Boys podcast. Mitch, welcome. Thanks, mate. Uh, pleasure to be on. Long time uh, listener, first time uh, speaker. How you doing, mate? It's good. Good to have you on, Mitch. Now, just quickly before we get into this ADP battle, just tell people what you do and where people can find what you do. Um, so I'm uh, one half of the Ball Boys Fancy Basketball podcast and YouTube channel. So. You can find us on YouTube at Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball. I'm on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA. We are just a couple of uh, fellow Aussie blokes living over in Brisbane, talking talking fantasy hoops, talking basketball, and um, like to sort of help people out in their in their fantasy drafts every now and again. So yeah, hit us up with some questions, and um, we'll do our best to help you guys out. So go go check out uh, Mitch and the Ball Boys uh, on YouTube or the podcast feed as well. Just go and give them a subscribe, give them a like, give them a. Why don't you stick a thumb up on them as well and give them a bit of a like over on their videos. Mitch, we're doing ADP battles today. Now, majority of this, not majority, all of it is based on category leagues. So there always is some crossover for points leagues, but when we're talking value and how we're comparing these blokes, we're doing it on the basis of category leagues. Let's just, uh, let's just get straight into it. Let's look at the first one here. And we're doing a hypothetical pick. Number 32, we are in the draft. We are picking at number 32. And yeah, we've both got that selection. Yep. Ma- Maga Porter Jr. is available. De'Aaron Fox is available. Who are you selecting? Um, now, so again, like you said, we're going um, category leagues. I'm also assuming that this is a head-to-head league, which is yep. our sort of um, our niche. Um, so I'm, I'm picking Fox at this point of view. Oh. De'Aaron Fox is my guy. Um, I think he's I think he's getting really underrated in in fantasy drafts. His Yahoo ranking was something like 47. Even since the update, it's been pushed further back into the 50s, but if we just look at this guy's like post All Star stats last year, he went absolutely crazy before his injury. He started putting up um, in post All Star twenty eight point five points per game, six and a half assists, four rebounds, nearly two steals a game. The efficiency is insane. Um, the free throw percentage started to get up. It is at eight attempts a game, so you do have to factor that in. Um, usually, I would like to be drafting Fox in like a punt free throw percentage build, but um, if you had some high free throw percentage volume players like a, 
a Damian Lillard or a Trey Young beforehand, you might be able to get away with it if we see that trend continue. Um, but I'm also just a bit, I'm a bit worried about Michael Porter Jr.'s efficiency. And I know that he's sort of set to take a more of a usage role in um, with uh, Murray out. But just the fact that such a high amount of his value is that like big field goal percentage um, category. If he starts to take that usage up, I'm worried that that usage is, and sorry, that efficiency is going to come down, which is going to affect his rank a lot because he doesn't give you any assists. His steals are not very high. Free throw percentage is sort of under 80%. So there's a few other things that I'm not too sold on with Michael Porter Jr. I think he might be getting a little overrated. We're going to bit ahead of ourselves with, with Michael Porter. Yeah, well, a couple of things that you mentioned there. Like the, the Fox ranking is ridiculous. They're pushing back to 56. Yeah. That makes no sense. Now, to me, I have these guys pretty close in terms of how I would uh, draft them. I personally would take Porter, but interestingly, Yahoo has just bumped his rank like through the roof. Like they put him to 22, and that, that's yeah. ridiculous. I wouldn't be picking Michael Porter there because I agree with him. It's something that I talk about in this show all the time. Like he shot 45% from three last year, and while I think he is a really good three-point shooter, if you go from 45 to 40, 40 is still yeah. great, but it's a big drop-off, and, and that impacts him. But I, I do think he can be a 20-point-per-game scorer this year. Eight rebounds, hit three threes. Like he can do all that. Yep. I think there's a bit of scope for him to be a better shot blocker as well. I don't think he's ever going to be a passer or a steals guy. I probably, again, I probably would... No, I probably... I would take Porter over Fox in majority of scenarios, but as everything, Mitch, when we're looking at it, like what have we done with our first two picks? How has yeah. the draft gone? Has, has just been a ton of point guards roll off the board and we're really struggling for assists? Then maybe we do need to take Fox here. It's not that far apart. And it's not as far apart as the Yahoo ranks 22 versus 50, 56 would tell you that. That's ridiculous, but... yeah, 30 in, spots, no. In a lot of drafts, you'll see both of these guys sitting here at pick 32. I would take Porter, say, 80% of the time, I reckon, and you're going to take Fox in a similar percentage of, of that time, and I don't think there's anything wrong with with either one of those decisions. That's just a, a way that I would lean towards it. And in terms of the Fox free throw percentage, it is a worry, and I think you've got to plan for it to be bad, but yeah. I also think it's a 50-50 proposition. He could be a 78% free throw guy this year. I don't, I don't think that's uh, any sort of outrageous claim to look at with uh, with Diara in there. We'll get on to talking about the next one soon, but Mitch, I don't know how you feel up in the Brisbane heat. Sometimes the sweat gets to you. And uh, if people have that problem with excessive sweating, living in a, such a tropical-esque environment as Brisbane, it might be prob a problem because sweat block is the product that you might need or your friends might need living up there to help deal with that excessive sweating. It is doctor created and doctor recommended. It is one of the strongest clinical antiperspirants that you can find. Put the sweat, wi sweat block wipes on at night, wipe them under your arms, and for seven days you can be covered. That's amazing stuff. Not only do they help with uh, with um, excessive sweating, but it also helps that embarrassment. Like no one wants to be out there with sweat patches under their arm as they're at work with their friends at school. That's embarrassing. Sweatblock is the product you need. Get to sweatblock.com. Use the promo code locked on. You can save 20%. You can find them on Amazon. You can get them at CVS. But if you can save 20%, why wouldn't you? So go to sweatblock.com and use that promo code locked on to save 20%. This might also be a familiar problem for some of you. You're watching your live sport in one spot. You've got your other on-demand shows you watch somewhere else. You watch your highlights on your phone, and then you've got to go borrow your mate's login to watch the other show that you want. It's all over the place. There's too much hassle. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all of the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It is called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch all of your sports, movies, and shows all in one place. No more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. There's no annual contract. That's a, that's another great thing with Direct TV Stream. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion, and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. Head to directtv.com and check it out. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required, and content varies by package. Let's go to our next package here, Mitch. Um, we are at pick 35, so just a couple of picks down the draft order here, and we're looking at a couple of guys in this uh, in this spot. One of them is Chrissy Middleton. The other is the Jedi, OG Ananobi. But what about Scarf? OG. Blizzard stop, ones. OG. Uh, you better stop, OG. Yeah, you better stop indeed. Now, Mitch, pick 35. You are, you're sitting there. So you've somehow you've got 32 and 35, but that's fine. Maybe it's a separate draft. Middleton, it Middleton's, Middleton's staring at you. Ananobi's staring at you. What are you doing? Well... Uh, OG's not stopping this year. He's he's um I think he's going to build off his post All Star numbers from last year, and and he's he's going to be my guy that I'm picking. I think this one is probably a little bit closer than the other one because um, there's not that sort of punt situation. These guys are pretty. You can you can put them in any sort of build basically. 
Um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of OG. I think he's going to take a huge step forward this year. You've obviously got Pascal Siakam, who's out for the start of the year. At the end of last year, his um, usage took a big hit when they were starting to tank down the end. They were sitting all these other guys. I also think there's scope to see his minutes increase. He was playing 33 minutes a, a, a night last year. And we know that Nurse likes to run his players into the ground. He's sort of plays most of those guys 35 plus in um, Lowry, Fred Van Vliet and um, Siakam all played 35 plus. So I think the, the the extra minutes are going to be there. I think I could easily see him averaging over 20 points over three assists. The threes could come up. Yeah, you could say the steals might come down, but they're, gonna, they're still going to come down to a high level. He's still going to be around that a steal and a half per game. And I just think that there's more upside with him there. And the downside I'm not too worried about. I just think that yeah, he's 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 in for a big year. The efficiency is going to be higher than Middleton, so uh, I'm taking a bit more of a a swing on OG than the the boring pick of Middleton um, personally. I think that's I think that's the thing. Middleton's a boring, but it's boring as shit. Like he just yeah. is what he is, right? I don't see him varying much between the 30 to 38 range, like in terms of overall rank and, and where he gets drafted. He's he's 32 on on Yahoo at the moment. OG is at 44. Um, Middleton falls. I've seen him fall to like 48, 49 in drafts because people are bored. They're just like, what is he doing? Where's the upside? Whereas OG didn't finish inside the top 50 last season. He wasn't far off it. But and he, he does have pretty... And I've talked about this a lot. I think he's going to take that usage way up and I think his scoring is going to be interesting. But a lot of his value is derived from the steals category. And much like you mm. talked about with Michael Porter and the three-point shooting, if he goes from an unbelievable two steals per game guy to 1.5, that's still really good but it takes a lot of value away. And, and that's, I guess, some of my worry with OG. Now, whether that can get off, offset by the increased usage, I'm not sure. I, I do think that I agree. The minutes will go up and the usage will go up for Ananobi. And I, to think, me- I think he's, I just think he's going to be like the secondary ball handler, the secondary playmaker, especially when Pascal Siakam's yeah, yeah, out. It'll, be, it'll be Fred and then it'll be him. So I guess it depends like, on what they do with Dragic. Okay, if, if they put yeah. Dragic in for 27 minutes a night, like that's pseudo starter role for Dragic, then yeah. he becomes that secondary ball handler guy. I don't but know I, if he's going to play many many games for Toronto. To be honest, I think, I think he's not, his days there are limited. Yeah, I, that, that's that's the uh, impression I'm under as well. But it hasn't happened yet, so we've got to sort yeah. of uh, you know, account for both eventualities that Dragic does yeah. play or doesn't play. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got no problem with OG going in the third round. I probably personally would be looking at him more as a fourth round back end fourth round guy, just because I'm always a little bit wary when a player's value is tied highly to one category, even if there is value in the other areas, because if there is, and especially if it's a, it's a low volume category, you, you drop 0.1, 0.2, there's 10 spots yeah. done already. And, and that's part of my worry with him, whereas Middleton's just going to produce right across the board and nothing's changing with his role already. We're, we're looking at Ananobi and going, well, I think that he gets more minutes and more usage and the efficiency stays and the steals stay. Whereas Middleton, I just go, well, this is what he does. Like, uh, what, what could possibly be dropping off for him? And it's a little bit of safety there, but, if you've gone safe early on and you want to go upside, then yeah, maybe maybe OG is going to be an option for you. Next next one for us, Mitch. We are we're going a little bit further down here. Okay, so let's talk pick forty five. I think that well, we've got two guys here. One of them is the crucifix, Christian Wood, and the other one is Benny Simmons, who apparently is not going to be at uh, training camp next week. That uh, report was reiterated over the last couple of days. Simmons had one of his worst, not one of, his worst season last year for fantasy. He'd had multiple top 20 years in the past um, and, and really fell off. And I've said this before, is I don't really see many scenarios of where he gets traded where it's a worse spot than what he was in last season. So I don't think he gets worse than that. But you're picking him here at 45. That's putting a lot of faith in, A, him improving on what he did last season, which I, I tend to agree with, but also the fact that he is going to get dealt and he is going to actually play. Because who knows what the hell's going on with him at this point? So Simmons versus Wood. I've already given it away. Which way you're going? Who, who are you taking? Yeah, well, I'm taking Simo. Um, look, I promise it's not an Aussie bias. I mean, we've got two Aussies on the show here, so um, I think look, even last year in it, the way I view these players, I think they're both punt free throw players. So I'm sort of taking the punt out I'll, of it. I'll, I know I'll get back you... to that in a sec. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, I, I am a bit concerned of Christian Wood's free throw percentage as we saw down the stretch last year, but. I'm, I'm treating these both guys as punt free throws. And in a punt free throw build, Ben Simmons was a top 40 player last year. Yep. You know, despite what you think of how he performed, obviously the points came down that re- reduced his field goal percentage impact. He's still a top 40 guy. So at pick 45, 
I'm already getting at least five spots of value if everything stays the exact same. There's also the like statistical scarcity in a build like that where those assists, those steals are super valuable in that type of team because sure, you can load up on uh, Clint Capellas and Rudy Gobert's and all these other guys, but you only get one point if you win field goal percentage by you know, 15% or you smash the other team by like, 200 rebounds. You still need to get those other categories. And in a, in a build like that, a player like Fox, who we talked about earlier, a player like Simmons, I boost them up the rankings and up their importance because of that statistical scarcity. Um, and I just, yeah, like you said, I don't see there's another team out there that his value is going to get lower when you've got someone like MB clogging up the paint and he's the focal point of that offense. If he goes to a team like, I don't know, Minnesota or something like that, there's a much more spacing, much more um, movement on the court that he can take advantage of. And I'm also a bit worried about Christian Wood and, and the team featuring him down this stretch of the season. I don't know if he's in their future plans. I know that, yes, he his stats on paper go up when when John Wall isn't there, but it's a different team to last year. It's it's a team focusing on their youth. You've got players like Sengun who was they traded up to to draft. So they've obviously they've got players like that, Garuba. They brought in Tice. Um, you know, there's there's a bit more competition at the center and power forward spot there than last year when they only really had an old Boogie Cousins and Olenek after the deadline. So I just think that down the stretch he might get marginalized in minutes compared to someone like a Simmons. I don't have that worry with Wood personally. Um, I, I do okay. agree that he isn't necessarily a part of their future and there is a there is a big possibility and if I was the Rockets I would be looking to trade him at the trade deadline I don't think they will but I, I think there is a possibility with that what you said with Simmons is all true and I think if you are looking at it through a lens of a punt free throw scenario which I think you have to do with Simmons he probably is a guy that we're talking pick 45 here like and I say that because his rank is like outside the top 50 on Yahoo yeah I think you're looking at him as being yeah, a third round guy at worst. Like if you're taking him in round three, there's no no problem whatsoever with doing that. In fact, he fits those punt free throw builds really, really well. Mm. Um, you talked about Wood and his free throws. I'm not that worried about those. He was really poor at him last year, 63%. It was weird. But the previous three seasons, he's at 74%. Um, I, I think that some of that was uh, ankle related. He had that bad ankle injury. And that, to me caused him to have that really large drop-off when he returned from it because he was excellent to begin the season, came back from the ankle problem and was terrible. Couldn't hit shots at the line, couldn't hit shots from the field. Everything went off for him. He was so um, so out of it in terms of just being comfortable on the court. And I do think all that's going to improve for Wood. The fact that John Wall isn't there solidifies him as a decently high usage player in this team. Yes, there's still Green and Porter, but Wood's going to get his shots there as well. Whereas you know, instead of having to share with three other guys, there's two other guys in that starting lineup now. So I think that helps him there. And I think the free throws move up. And I just think there's just too much uncertainty, not too much uncertainty. I've got no problem drafting Simmons uh, at all. Mm. But if these two guys are yeah, on the board for me, I would take I would take Wood ahead of uh, ahead of Simo. But um, again, Simmons is being significantly underrated. And if I look, if you go to my projections and have a look at a punt free throw scenario, Simmons jumps up into the top 30, but Wood jumps up into the top 24. So he's just a little bit higher than that. So if they're both on the board there at 45. Now, if, if, Sim, if Wood's gone and... I'm sitting at 45, and, and that's going to fit what I do. And Simmons is there. I'll take him. i got no problem with taking him at 45. Yeah. I would just take Wood uh, over him. Now, would you be adverse to just take... If Simmons was off the board, would you take Wood at this spot? Or would you go like, oh, I'm not I'm not quite sure enough on him? I, I think around this spot is fine. I think I've seen uh, his rank climb into the top 40. I don't think I'd be taking him in that spot. But in the sort of, um, yeah, the 40s to uh, around pick 50, I think that's that's sort of the spot I'd, I'd like to take him there because... Um, like I said, I do, I do have a few concerns. His stats did drop after the All-Star break last year. I know the ankle injury was a thing there, but um, yeah, I just don't know. The team's going to be prioritizing him it post All-Star break this year again. If you're looking for something different for a uh, for a fantasy basketball league, I, uh, I think you should check out Sleeper because they do have something that's completely different, a, a format called Game Pick, which um, is something that's different if you are in a league with your mates. Maybe they're not as into fantasy basketball as you listen to this show. Game Pick might be the option for you. What it is on Sleeper is it enables you to choose just one game for each player a week. You're not looking at streaming. You're not looking at you know how many games each player plays per week. It just simplifies things down. Now, Sleeper is only offering points leagues, which can be really good for beginners and casual people as well. But what the one 
of the, the most positive things I, I think with the sleeper app is just how good everything looks and the functionality of the app, the draft room and the options they have, the dynasty functions. There's a lot of great stuff there over on the sleeper app. So go and try it out. Download the app, get some of your friends in because the more people that play fantasy basketball, the better. We want everyone in, casual people, do it at your work, do it at your school, get everyone in. And this can be a great introduction, introductionary, introductionary, I don't know, you know the word that I'm trying to say, to get into fantasy basketball by trying out that sleeper app and their, uh, and their game pick format. If you are like me, and as this ad copy would tell me, uh, not an elite athlete, which I find pretty... Um, pretty insulting to be honest but if you're stressed with the the everyday issues of sitting in your desk and, and you've got body aches and pains theragun might be able to help theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth speed and power and it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush there's so many giggities i could drop in this ad but i won't do it the gen 4 theragun doesn't just feel good it gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using theragun's signature percussive therapy which goes 60 percent deeper than vibration alone i gotta do it giggity all right whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out an injury or just the stresses of everyday life there's no substitute for the theragun gen 4 theragun is treated or trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid and elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of thousands of customers and me. So try Theragun for 30 days starting at $199. Go to therabody.com slash locked on right now and get a Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash locked on, therabody.com slash locked on. Let's go to our last couple here, Mitch. Pick 64, we're getting down the list. We have got DeMar DeRozan on his new team. He's available, as is Elf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. All right, so, pick 64, Isaiah Stewart, DeMar DeRozan, what are you doing? I'm going I'm going. Uh, Elf Stewart, Isaiah Stewart here. I think he's in for a big season. I think he's um, one of those per-minute guys that's just going to rack up a lot of stats. We saw it towards the end of stretch last year. Um, in 24 minutes, 10.75 rebounds. He put up a block and a half, 55% field goal percentage. He started shooting some threes, although I don't necessarily think that that will continue uh, into this season. I think they were just kind of throwing stuff up and seeing what stinks. Um, so I think he, he'll rein that in, which will not affect his field goal percentage. I think so. I think he's going to be about 28 to 30 minutes a night, personally. I don't know if they sort of run a Linux in there at the center or if he's more of a, a power forward or, or they'll have a bit of a mix and match. But I expect to see him getting at least 28 minutes a night. And in that, he, he could easily average, you know, 12 and 10 with, you know, a block and a half, two blocks, solid percentages. I think that the free throw percentage is salvageable on low attempts. So um, I just think he's one of the last solid big men in like this stretch. There's a bit of a run. Um, and after this, it kind of drops off. I'm also, again, worried about DeMar DeRozan. He's one of those guys that relies on usage to get his fantasy input. He doesn't get steals. He doesn't get blocks. He doesn't shoot threes. Um, and when he's going from, like, the number one player on the Spurs to potentially the number three player on the Bulls, that's going to impact his points. It's going to impact his assists. And also because he's a positive contributor in field goal percentage and free throw percentage, that impact is going to come down as well because those attempts are going to drop. Uh, in my opinion. So I think he's got a lot to lose from last year. I think he's going to be one of the biggest declines from year to year. So I think that that's why I'd be taking Stewart um, just to solidify that those big men stats. Stewart's an interesting one. Yahoo had him ranked like at 120 at one point. He's, he's they've, come in. They've updated him right down to number 67. The ADP hasn't caught up yet. It's at 95. But this is the area that I've had Isaiah Stewart basically the whole time. And if you wanted to go a little bit earlier, I've got no problem with that. Because as you said, like after him, centers drop off significantly. You, yeah. Your next guy is probably going to be Yucca Pertl. And that might not work particularly well. Now, I can see Stewart going ahead of someone like, you know, or ending up better than, say, Jonas Valanciunas even in New Orleans. Mm. We're not really sure what that role is. I'm pretty excited to see what he does. I really hate if Casey would you know, play a Linux significant minutes over him. I don't think he will, but there is that worry there. My uh, my thing with DeRozan is, you're, you're right, the usage for him is definitely going to drop off. Like, I've got no, no problem with, with saying that. But what DeRozan was able to do is basically work almost as a point guard last season as well and average a ton of assists. Now, it is going to be hard to get that same level of assists on this team because Lonzo Ball is around. But I do think that his game isn't as highly dependent on that super high usage as it has been in the past. So even if it drops down from what was like 26, 27 last year, if it drops down to 23... 
I still think that his ability to generate assists, which was the argument you used earlier on when talking about you know, Fox and Simmons, like getting that rare stat in the assists, it does give DeMar that, that little bit of a boost. I think he averages like a minimum five assists per game. Maybe he can get to six assists per game and can work um, off off ball with um, with Levine or as a creator, you know, spotting up Levine and, and working pick and rolls and, and getting to mid range shots. I think he is going to drop off from last season, but I do think that his ability to pass and yeah, that that assist rate that he's been able to improve significantly over the last three seasons uh, holds him in in pretty good stead from a fantasy point of view and. Um, and I probably would take him over Stewart just again if we want to talk you know, rarity. Just getting some assists in that point of the draft. There's not that many guys left. There's, you've got that big point guard run in that round three to four type area that often happens. Yep. And um, you know, getting a five assist guy, six assist guy perhaps, it isn't always going to be the easiest thing to do there. So I probably would lean DeRozan, but to me, it's not it's not that far apart to me. And I, again, like I said earlier on, like there's 80% of the time I might do DeRozan. In this one, probably like 70, 65% of the time I take DeRozan and 35% I do Stewart, depending on the rest of my team. They're completely different players as well. Yeah. So it, it does it does dramatically depend on what you've done before here. So, you know, if you're after that big man, then obviously Stewart, if you need his assist, DeRozan. So I've got no no problems with that. I just think that, yeah, DeRozan's value is going to drop a fair bit from last year. I, I would I would agree that it is going to drop. And I think he was a top 45 guy last year. So we're talking 20 yeah. spots below that here at 64. And I think, yeah, him at 64 yeah. is, is totally fine in that, in that area. Last one for us here, Mitch, before we get out of here. And we're going all the way down to number 100. I have got two guys here, two big men, so they're not that different in terms of position played. We're looking at uh, Mitchie Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Well, when you, well your boy's up in Brisbane. Um, and Jaden McDaniels from the Minnesota Timberwolves. So we're at pick 100. Mitchie Robinson's ready to take it. Jaden McDaniels is there. What are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm taking a bit of an upside swing here, and I'm, I'm going with the young Jaden McDaniels. Um, this is, again, it's probably a close one like the OG and Middleton debate. Uh, I've never been a big Mitchell Robinson fan, the uh, the basketball player, that is. <laughs> um, but, but I've yeah, he's a three-stat player, like field goal percentage, rebounds and blocks, and that's it. He, yep. he doesn't really provide much else. Yeah, trickle of steals here and there, but I don't know how, how consistent that will be this year. Um, I'm worried about foul trouble, and even when the foul trouble isn't there, it usually means his blocks are coming down. He only blocks one and a half per game last year in 28 minutes. So I, the, the hype around Mitchell Robinson before last year was the fact that his block rate was so absurd that when he gets these minutes, he's going to be averaging three blocks plus a game. And, and we saw that didn't happen. So he's lost a lot of the allure of his upside there. Um, so when it's only three categories that he's really providing a positive boost in, I tend to, as you've lost your, your Lego poster oh, at the Jesus. back there. I know, I know. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll, we'll push on. Um, but yeah, Jaden McDaniels, I think he's he's going to have a breakout season this year. I'm, I'm pretty high on him. Um, maybe talking as a dynasty owner, I think that might boost my my stocks in him. But I think he's going to be averaging more points, more threes, uh, more assists, more steals than than a, a Mitchie Robinson. Um, the blocks, I think, can be pretty similar if we go off last season's number with Mitchell Robinson. I think McDaniels' minutes are going to get up towards 30 points again. Uh, sorry, 30 minutes a game. And I just think that his uniqueness in the fact that he could be a, a three steals blocks guy, like all one, all above one per game, uh, I think is uh, pretty unique at this point in the draft. And, and there's a fair bit of upside there. All right. So you, you talk about Mitchell Robinson being a three category guy, which is true. Like it's rebounds, it's blocks, and it's field goal percentage. I, I His blocks dropped way off last season. I think there is... Yeah, if we, if we look at guys who have super high block rates and go, well, there's a risk of those coming back down. I think we have to acknowledge that Robinson having such a significant decline, there's a risk, not a risk, there's a chance that it goes back up. Not necessarily to the same level, but if he came in and averaged two blocks per game, I don't think that would be a shock to anybody. No. Right? We don't necessarily have to bank on it, but that could happen. Like he could shoot 70% from the field. He could average eight points, 10 boards with two 2.2 blocks on 70% shooting. And that's like the least outrageous stat line prediction I think you could have for Robinson there. The question I ask you about McDaniels is what is he going to do well on this team? Like he can block shots a little bit. He gets some steals. The min- I agree, the minutes will go up. But is he going to get touches with Towns, Russell, Beasley, Edwards? When's he going to touch the ball in that starting, in that starting group? I, I just don't see how often he's going to touch the ball. And there is chances he plays at the three. 
with Vanderbilt at the four, which reduces his rebound numbers and reduces his blocking numbers. Now, I, I really like taking McDaniels around that you know, 100 to 115 range. I, I think that's a totally fine one. But I also think that I think people are getting a little bit, maybe a little bit uh, overly hyped on McDaniels based on the way the yeah. Timberwolves have spoken about him. Oh, he's part of our core group and, and we love how impressive he was last season, but it didn't necessarily turn into these gigantic numbers or anything like that. And just trying to find, like he ranked, he played 24 minutes a night last year and he was outside the top 250. That's not particularly good. Um, and we can talk about Robinson being disappointing, but you know, that, that's not good for McDaniels. And I, and I do think that he is worth a pick for sure. And I think the minutes push up and he does take steps forward, but yeah, he is a guy that at this point, I'm not sure what his positive contribution category is outside of block. So is he a, Robinson's a three cat guy. Is he a one cat guy? Like that, that's my issue with taking him over Robinson yeah. and all, all can come together, but it's going to require, I think two, two or three guys from this Wolves team to get hurt so he can get a larger role. Yeah, I, look, I, I definitely agree with that. And I, I, I know he is a bit of a hype guy at this point in the draft. I, I do, I pick 100. I'm, I'm probably hoping that he's a bit later. I, I want to get him a bit later, close to 110. And, and you probably uh, can. Like, he's ranked 147 yeah. on Yahoo. Like, you yeah. don't, you probably don't have to go here at this point. And, and and what you said about Mitchell Robinson and the blocks coming back up is, is true and all that. And I think that he does fit a build very, very well. I mean, you, you talk, we talked about the big man run earlier. You know, he is still someone that can give you those stats um, later in drafts. Are you worried about Nerlens Noel at all? Maybe stealing some minutes because he obviously he got signed to that contract this off season. It seems like they paid him enough money that they they want to see him out there on the court. And I, I am worried that yes, Mitchell Robinson played 28 minutes a night last year, but maybe that even comes back to like a 24-24 split this season. Um, are you worried about that at all? Yeah, look, I think that is a risk for sure. Um... I, I do think that they will be looking at Robinson as the starter, but you know that that then goes into that. Well, if he plays twenty four minutes a night, he doesn't have to worry about foul trouble as much, and maybe the block rate does go back up, and maybe his actual total production is the same in twenty eight minutes versus twenty four minutes. I think there's a possibility that that happens. Now, Noel is you know we talk about Robinson getting hurt, which is something that happens a lot. Noel's gonna a guy that's gonna get hurt a ton as well. That's just something that that happens in his career. Um, I am worried a little bit, but again, I, I just think. When I'm looking at this sort of an area with the big man drop off in terms of the upside play, I'd rather I think there's a much higher chance that Robinson could end up in, as a top sixty player, whereas I think there's zero chance that McDaniel's does that. There's probably only twenty percent chance that Robinson does it, but it's better than one yeah. percent for McDaniel's, and that's sort of how I'm looking at this pick. And they, it could go wrong here, but it also in Minnesota they could start Jared Vanderbilt, they could start Torian Prince, like that they could play McDaniel's twenty six minutes a night and not 30 a night, um, and not really produce even top 150 numbers. So I just think there is a lot more upside in Robinson here. But yeah, I, I can easily see it going the other direction as well. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what McDaniels can do. But he didn't, uh, he didn't necessarily prove it in terms of what his numbers were last year. It was more like you know, the vibes of what Jaden McDaniels was producing yeah. rather than the, the, the flat-out numbers. It, he definitely passes the eye test. And um, I, I think you know he was a rookie. Like He's, he's going to get better in his second year. I think that, that natural growth will improve. And I, I'm not... I'm I'm not too worried about Tory and Prince and, uh, and Vanderbilt, especially with the contract they gave Vanderbilt. Didn't really um, give me much confidence that they see a big future in him. So uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident he'll get the minutes. Like you said, the, the stats, are they going to follow? Yet to be seen, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Mitch, that'll do it for us on this ADP battle. If you are watching this video, go down below and tell me who you would have selected at each of those five spots that we had. Let me know in the comments below and go and check out Mitch over on the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Show. You can find that on YouTube and you can find a podcast for it as well. Mitch, thanks for coming on uh, the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. No worries. Thanks, mate. I'm happy to come on here again. And I know you've got a lot of uh, uh, keen Raptors fans, so they'll know who to pick out of that uh, that OG uh, Middleton uh, debate. So. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll let me know all about it in the comments below. Mitch, thank you again. No worries. Cheers, mate. All right, we're back. Devin Booker post is back up behind me. That'll do it for today's show. Don't forget, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, thumb me up, ring my bell, leave it down below. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this. I'm on Cameo. Can you believe it? So if you want me to do a custom shout out for your league, for your draft night, for one of your mates, I've done things for drafts to roast players in leagues, did a wedding shout out as well. You can uh, you find the link below here on the YouTube video or just go to Cameo and search my name and you'll see me there and you can request a Cameo from me. Guys, we 
are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.